This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Joining me now is John Brummett with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. He's a columnist that you can read usually four sure. times a week, but I think it's just three times a week during the holidays here, correct? I take uh, the Wednesday uh, online bonus column off during uh, December. That's that's my uh, Christmas break. And man, it's uh, it's liberating. One, one fewer column a week makes a big difference. Uh, so it's good. It allows me to uh, do Christmas gift wrapping and things like that. You outsourced out, out out this year. So I don't know if you would remember uh, last week, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Congress cuts a COVID-19 deal. Isn't right. it good? You know, I guess it's uh, anything is good at this point. Uh, uh, for, for Congress to be able to deliver some form of relief uh, uh, is is positive. And it looked for a while like it might be so dysfunctional that it uh, wouldn't be able to get that done. As it turns out, it is only dysfunctional enough that, that uh, a bipartisan group of senators came up with a plan that uh, under the way Congress now works, the undemocratic, unlegislative way it works, it was taken over by McConnell and Pelosi who then uh, who then set about fighting about it privately until they produce at the last minute a form of the bill that they both find acceptable, meaning that members of Congress uh, now uh, were told today, uh, vote for this or nothing, otherwise you'll be responsible for not delivering any aid to, uh, to the needs out there. Uh, Congress just irks me uh, enormously, but... Uh, I think it's good to get uh, the direct stimulus, the direct checks to people. I think people need a lot of people need some cash, uh, and and then I think it's good for schools. I think it's good for the uh, a vaccination. We need to get do better in, in our distribution of the of the vaccination. I think it's better for small business. I personally uh, lament uh, that there was that I don't think, and it's all so fast here at the end. I don't believe there's any assistance, uh, 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 any money to state go- state and local governments. I don't think that's so. And that's, that's uh, highly unfortunate. But, you know, I- I'm all for imperfect progress. I think that's, that- that's what we need. We need some imperfect progress. We need to do something, even if it's not ideal. And uh, that seems to be getting done. I've seen, some of, the, I've seen some of the rationalization that some of the silos of money will help out local government in some way. For instance, there is some money for education and that will help out local school districts. And things. But, but, but schools, uh, uh, vaccination distribution, uh, small business uh, grants or assistance or loans that uh, perhaps administered by states. But I think this, this Republican notion that we can't give direct money to state governments because we'll just be bailing out profligate Democratic states. Oh, you know this, 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 this partisan polarization and dysfunction. It's an old story, but it has really been showcased in this matter. And it's kind of absurd the way. Uh, why would anybody want to go sit in the Congress to wait until the last minute to be force fed something they they don't get to read beforehand, spending a, a trillion dollars? Why do people want to go to Congress? I guess because it's easy work. You don't, you don't have to do anything. Uh, very distressing to me the way this was done, but at least something is being done. And uh, let us not make the perfect the enemy of the good. Awesome. Right. Other events in Washington, D.C., we've got uh, Donald Trump reportedly mulling, declaring martial law, being encouraged by some supporters to declare martial law, uh, appointing a special counsel to investigate Joe Biden's son before he leaves office. The whole threat of wholesale pardons are out there. What do you expect to happen in these last 30-ish days of the Trump presidency? Your questions about what to expect from Trump, they're flawed questions. No one knows what to expect from Trump other than madness. However, I will tell you this, and this is the question really. I've talked to a couple of people who actually have had experience in this field. What happens with this madman in the White House and what has been happening for four years is that he goes off in the Oval Office with just crazy ideas, shouting, angry, because things aren't going well for him and and he wants to, let's just do this or let's just do that. 
And you've had two, basically two kinds of people. You had the people who would become alarmed and go out and leak to the press. We're afraid the man's getting ready to do something really crazy. And then you had the ones more like, say, when she was there, Sarah Sanders, who would go out and say, well, let's let him calm down. And, and, and he didn't really mean that. And, and we'll go back in and do some increment of that. That's, that's what we've had. And over the four years, I said to people, don't pay attention to what he says right now. And don't worry too much about the inside reporting of the Maggie Habermans and the others in Washington uh, who can find out from others, from, from people, what he said. Just, just wait. Pay less attention to what he says because it doesn't matter. The issue now is when he brings in this woman, Powell, whatever her name is, who, who wants to confiscate all the voting machines and sees a conspiracy uh, uh, and maybe wants to make her a special counsel or special uh, himself uh, rather than having the Justice Department do it. Uh, and and when he when he speaks favorably in private meetings in the Oval Office to this idea of using the military, some form of martial law, which he will then which which somebody will then go out and warn the New York Times he said, in which he will then say the New York Times is, is guilty of fake news. That's the whole cycle we've seen. Is it business as usual? Can we count on this man blessedly leaving our White House when his time is blessedly up? Or is his madness intensifying and do we need to worry? That's the question for Christmas season. Can I sit in here and enjoy Christmas and turn on some Christmas carols and look and behold some Christmas lights and try to find that cocoon of, of serenity and transcendence at Christmas? Or do I need to stay alert to the president going crazier than ever? That's, that's what we don't know right now, frankly, uh, uh, with his uh, uh, late, but latest behavior. Let's pull it back. Let's pull it back to Arkansas. The state legislature declines on uh, getting involved, making a decision on Asa Governor Asa Hutchinson's emergency powers, his emergency authority. What do you read into that uh, declination from the House and the Senate? Well, it's two things. These things are sometimes complicated. Uh, one is is that reasonable people decided. What's the point, really? Uh, the governor can do this without that. He's trying to get some cover, trying to put the onus on the legislature. It's going to be on the legislature soon enough. So uh, let's just not do it. And we're going to have this, have it out over this continued executive power of the governor in the regular session. The other was an awareness that among some of the more pragmatic conservatives in the legislature, that if we have this, we're just going to, we're just going to give us give a forum to these ultra right ideologues to come up here and make a show and produce uh, maybe uh, uh, twenty votes uh, uh, or twenty five votes their way, but 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 just but just demagogue this thing, governors' powers and how we don't need to be wearing masks and we don't need to surrender our liberties, and if and I think they decided if we got to have that and we probably do, let's just give them one shot at the microphone rather than two. I think that's what all happened. The consequence of it all was not great. One of the big legislative session will be the hate crimes legislation. Some say it is dead on arrival already. Some say a healthy debate will take place and uh, let's just see what happens. How do you see it playing out? Well, uh, I don't want to call it dead on arrival. I want to call it gravely ill on arrival. Uh, it's going to go to the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, the fact of the matter is some of these more ideologically showboaty right-wing senators uh, to whom I was alluding in the last answer, they have loaded themselves up on that uh, uh, committee uh, for, this, for a stand your ground law. They won't be able to pass that over Stephanie Flowers' uh, 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 raging, uh, glorious raging, I would say. And uh, and then on this on, on on the hate crimes, they either want to beat it, or at the very least, they want to reframe it, including taking out uh, sexual orientation and gender identity as as uh, protected groups uh, in in the hate crimes law. So they would, I mean, if they hold fast, they can simply beat it, and I expect them. Owing to their philosophies, their behavior, and their constituencies, constituencies to hold fast. There is a thought 
that since Dem Democrats got a healthy nine vote membership on the House Judiciary Committee and the governor still is a man of influence and might be able to get a couple of Republicans to go with him, it is possible you could move that out of the House, send it down to the Senate, bring pressure to bear on those senators for being, uh, uh, the, and, and you got Tyson and Walmart in the business community working hard for, for the bill to make Arkansas a more modern, diverse, uh, inclusive place uh, for, for business growth. And then even if these guys held it up in committee, there's always a way to pull it out to the floor. So I'm not saying it's dead. I'm saying it's really, really sick. And this could be some high drama, but boy, is this a decisive thing. And I think it could be, uh, we could be headed for a uh, danger for the state. Uh, because if, if, if we have senators blocking a hate crimes law when we're only when we're one of only three states that, that doesn't have one on the basis that they don't want protections for gay people i see national headlines in that i see something that could harm the state's reputation and business climate so that's why i've been writing about it and paying attention to it uh visiting with the governor last week he encouraged me to uh quit being so uh fretful that uh, this is uh, you. You don't you don't shy away from a fight. Uh, if losing it might cause the state embarrassment, you fight to win it. That's his position. That's what he's saying now. Good for him. As you can see, the '80s insurgent conservative of Arkansas, Hutchinson, is now manning the left flank of Arkansas legislative politics. This one is going to be most interesting. So basically, basically. you don't step on Superman's cape. You don't spit into the wind and you don't mess around with Jim or Asa in this matter. What, what are you doing quoting a Jim Croce songs? You're not old enough to remember Jim Croce songs. I am old enough to remember that. My All right. brother used to play the eight track tape in the car. How about that? Right, right. Good. <laughs> Good for you. All right. Uh, before we get out of here, I got to get your take on uh, whether or not you're lining up tickets to go to the Texas Bowl so you can cheer on your three and seven Arkansas Razorbacks. Are they three and seven or three and they are three and seven, right? Not three and eight, right? Oh, uh, yeah, three and seven. Uh, no, no, no. I got even I, I, even in my boring life, I got better things to do and better ways to spend my money than getting down to uh, where is that, Houston? for that bowl against uh, TCU. Uh, three and seven in a bowl game, fine. Way to go, Sam. Woo pig. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, but boy, this is a weird, weird year. And uh, I suspect, I don't know what, what the crowd will be permitted. I mean, I don't know how many people will go. And I don't know if people can go and make the usual trip and hang out in a hotel if we want to. And I don't know if the teams will go down for several days of bowl activities. I would think those would be limited. Uh, you may, you, you keep up with the, the uh, sports news more closely than I do. Uh, so you might know, but it's just very, very weird. I'll watch it on TV and root for the Hogs to beat, who is it, TCU? Yeah, good. That's, That's right. right. That's right. All right. All right. John Brummett with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Always good to be with him and have a Merry Christmas. You too and everybody out there. Merry Christmas. All right. Take care. That's all, right. all for today's program. I'm Roby Brock. Thanks for joining us.